Hello everyone, and welcome to the seventh video of the Angular Portfolio website course. In the last video, we worked on creating and styling our navbar. In this video, we will be making it functional so that when we click on the different links, it will navigate to those different parts of our site. Before continuing, let's discuss how navigation works in Angular. Traditionally, a website would have many different web pages, and the links would point to those different pages. However, with Angular, we are creating a single page web application. So instead of navigating to different web pages, we will be navigating to different components instead. But you might be wondering, how does Angular know which component to navigate to? This is handled through routing. Routing in this context is the feature of Angular that handles navigation of our website. Let's go to our project. In our app folder, we have a file called app routing module. Let's click on that. We can configure routing for our project within this file. More specifically, this routes array is what will tell Angular the different URL paths for our website and which components they lead to. However, before we can start setting up routing, we will need components to navigate to. In the terminal, we're going to create four new components for each of the links in our navbar. Let's create the home components by typing ng g c home skip test and press enter. Let's do this again for portfolio. And again for the resume component. And once more for our contact page. Now we have some components to work with. Before we set up routing, let's hover over to Routes Array. The documentation tells us that Routes represents a route configuration for the router service, and Routes is an array of route objects. Let's open up the Routes Array and initialize an empty route object. Inside of this empty route object, we will define routing for our home component. The route object has a few different properties. The first one we will set is the path. The path is a relative URL that will point to a given component. This first object is going to define routing for our home component, so I'm going to set the path to home. The next property we're going to define is the component property. This tells Angular which component corresponds to the path we just set. Let's set this equal to the home component that we just created. Doing this should auto import the home component into this file, but in case it doesn't, make sure to include this import statement at the top. If all of this doesn't make total sense yet, don't worry as I will demonstrate these changes on the site in just a moment. But before we can do that, we need to add our routing configuration to our app root HTML template. Navigate to app component HTML. Below the div, type router outlet. Now let's go to our site. Now that we set up routing, if we append slash home to our URL, the placeholder text for our new home component will be displayed. This works because this is the path that we just set in our router configuration, and we told it to display the home component when we navigate to that path. The home component is displayed below our navbar because in our app root template, We added the router outlet below our header and navbar. 
This means that our site will display whatever component our path is pointed to below the header and navbar. Let's go back to our app routing module and set up routing for the other three components we just created. Let's go to our site and make sure routing to these components is working correctly. In the URL, if you change slash home to slash portfolio or any of the other routing paths we just set, it should display the corresponding component. Everything is looking good so far. If we try to click on any of our links in the navbar, nothing happens yet. This is because we still need to configure these links to navigate to the paths we just defined in our routing module. Let's go to our navbar's HTML template. In order for these links to navigate to the different paths we just defined, we need to add a few properties to them. In the first A tag here, we're going to set a property called router link. This is a property derived from Angular that tells our site which path to navigate to when this link is clicked. Since this is for the home page, we're going to set it to slash home. We're going to repeat this step for our other links as well. Let's test this out on our site. Now when we click on any of the links in our navbar, we should be directed to the corresponding component in URL. If anything is not working at this point, I would recommend that you go back and double check your spelling, as the smallest typo could cause this part to not work correctly. If everything is working correctly, then we are at the point where we now have a functional navbar. But what would happen if we were to navigate to a path that we haven't defined in our routing module? For example, if I were to add some random letters to the end of our URL and press enter, what we'll find is that it will not display anything for our router outlet. Although this shouldn't happen, it's possible that someone looking at our site may unintentionally do something like this, so let's add a safeguard for that scenario. Go ahead and go back to your project. And open up the app routing module again. For a scenario like this, we're going to add another route object to our routes array. Let's do that now. We're going to set the path to two asterisks. Next, we're going to set the component to home component. And for this one, we're going to set an additional property. The property that we're going to set is path match. And we're going to set this to full. This last route object acts as a wildcard for our site. It's saying that if we encounter any path that is not any of the ones we specified above, our site will default to displaying the home component. Let's test this now. Now, if we add random text to the end of our URL, it will always bring us back to our home component. We wouldn't expect a user of our site to type in a random URL manually, but if they do, we can now handle that scenario. At this point, our navbar is almost done. Functionally, it is complete, but there's still a little bit of styling left to do. If we take a look at the finished site, whichever link we click on will be highlighted in the navbar. Let's go to our navbar's HTML template to set this.
The links were highlighted when clicked on due to a property called Router Link Active. This property allows us to set additional styling for when we click on this link and it becomes the active component that is being displayed via the router outlet. Let's set this to the text dark bootstrap class. This will give us that bolded look that we saw on the finished site. Let's add this property into the other links as well. Let's test this on our site. We can now see the links becoming highlighted when we click on them. We're almost done, but there's one last bit of styling that we need to take care of first. If we take a look at the finished site again, the title of our tab will change depending on which part of our website we're on. Let's go back to our project. Let's open up the TypeScript file for our home component. In order to set the title, we're going to need to use what's called a service in Angular. A service provides a set of functionality that is available globally to all of our components. This differs from the TypeScript file we have in front of us, which can provide functionality to a specific component. For example, if I were to create a function here called do something, I could then add a button to my home component and only within my home component could I have that button call this function when clicked. Going back to services, we will be using a service to set our title across multiple components. Angular comes with a variety of pre-built services. We can also create our own services, which is something we will do later on in this course. And it will be at that point that we will go into more detail about what services are and how they work. But for now, let's go ahead and use one of the services that Angular provides us with to set our title. In the constructor, let's inject this service by typing private title service title. It should import this service into our class, but if it doesn't, add this line above. Within our constructor, let's type this dot title service dot set title John Doe dash home. This will now set the title to John Doe dash home whenever this component is loaded. Let's test this out on our site. Now, instead of displaying Angular Portfolio website, it is now displaying John Doe home. We need to set the title for each of our components, so let's go back to our project. Go ahead and open up the TypeScript file for our portfolio component. Let's repeat these steps again, so let's inject the title service into our constructor. And again, let's set the title in the constructor, except this time it will say portfolio. Let's repeat this process for the resume component. And once more for the contact component. Let's go to our site and verify this is working correctly.
The title of our site now changes whenever we navigate to different parts of our site. We have now finished setting up and implementing our navbar. In the next video, we will start building out the homepage. Thanks for watching.